Breakfast puppies? Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. In every episode, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will filibuster fondly over facts and feelings of your favorite films, and then get to the glorious gaming goodness, giving Game Masters great gimmicks on generating golden genius. Have Movies Will Game, brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! You know, I gotta, I gotta tell you guys something. I miss Brendan Fraser. I miss this era. So do I. Brendan Fraser. This gruff, buff, lovable idiot. I, I miss mummy Brendan Fraser. I have for a very long time. Yeah. Are, are you familiar with the Save Brendan Fraser movement online? I, I am yeah. not, but every week you bring up another movement. Exactly <laughs> Exactly how often? So I think it started a year or two ago on Reddit uh-huh. where people were talking about how Brendan Fraser was being... Okay. I'm going to paraphrase this, and I'm probably going to get part of the details wrong, but I think he was being raked over the coals in a divorce settlement or something. Oh, he was yeah. basically penniless. And Brendan had, Fraser, if you'd like to be a guest on Have Movies, Will Game, we'll start your trip to fame right back. But he had no more work, and then a whole bunch of his fans got on Reddit, started this huge Reddit called Save Brendan, or Save Brendan Fraser, that has become one of the biggest Reddits of, of its era. Nice. Well, yeah. to go on top of that, um, GQ... Like right on top of that? GQ did this huge expose on Brendan Fraser, and and as it turns out, uh, he was actually, uh, according to this interview that that he, that he was in, um, he was um, molested, mm-hmm. so to say, by one of the higher ups in in Hollywood. And when he said, "No, I'm not doing that," that's when his career started to tank. Like he was at a party, and he got felt up by one another male. Uh, producer and he's like no nope. oh, 20 bucks says it was tom cruise that's how he got the part <laughs> no but yeah there was there tom was tom cruise if you'd like to be on <laughs> <laughs> no we're not all scientologists so he wouldn't probably come anywhere near that near yeah, us. he would he'd just sit on the couch and stand on it, <laughs> like it oh, <laughs> so speaking of our podcast who are we again hi i'm matthew and i'm dusty and i'm nathaniel and we miss brendan fraser yes we do and that's why we're doing the Mummy. The bum, 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 bum. Mummy. One of my favorite adventure movies. Yes. I, not I have to not say, the remake of with Tom Cruise. It was done here a year yeah, ago. Yeah, this is no the 1999 standards. Brendan Fraser pulp action movie. Rachel. I have to say, we did a vote on this. Uh, what, what was that uh, What was that poll? Uh, the poll was on our website. We did a poll for, uh, I think, like pulpy adventure yeah, movies. Pulpy adventure and, movies. And we had uh, The Mummy. We had Sahara. Raiders of the Lost Ark, yeah. Sahara, Sahara, and was there one more? Nobody voted for Sahara. No, nobody, no, nobody no, did. It was Raiders person. of the Lost Ark and, and this. I forget the fourth yeah. one. There was, oh, it was Romancing the Stone. Romancing oh, yeah, the Romancing the Stone. Yeah. 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 This is better than all of them. I agree. I, I was, even surprised, I was yeah. surprised that The Mummy took over Raiders I, in, the, Raiders, in this poll. Don't get me wrong. The Mummy came from Raiders. That yeah. kind of, of witty banter back and forth. That that was Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's one of the movies that started that whole feel of what the mummy became. But this is so much better. Oh, <laughs> this is this is straight out of old Hollywood serials. Mm-hmm. Uh, the ragtag bunch of adventures in 1930s Egypt, accidentally unleashing the huge undead, almost invulnerable, utterly evil, evil Egyptian priest, and then they spend the rest of the movie you like know, trying to kill him, fighting him. Yes. Okay, let, let's, and one-liners. Oh, God. The one-liners, the one-liners are great. I want to talk about this Egyptian priest, right? Okay, okay so first tab. off, I'm going to say that his his lady friend, Death Booty, that, that silky thing that she was wearing at the beginning when they were having their illicit tryst. Mm-hmm. Dear God. Was it just me, though? It was uh, like the pan up was great, and then you got to the face, and you're like, oh. Yeah, yeah, she was... Oh, I, th- I thought I too much too much makeup. Like the Moon princesses. is a total butterface. I'm just saying. Really, but, I disagree. I well, well okay, but let's talk but, about let's talk about this Egyptian, <laughs> this, this Egyptian, the 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 sacrilege that he committed and the and the, the touching the, the eternal, gold paint. Well, the eternal damnation that he was submitted to, mm-hmm. he was condemned to. So, if I were a pharaoh and I wanted to 
hurt someone or to give them eternal damnation, I would talk to my priest and see if there are hidden clauses in there that could allow this guy <laughs> to become all powerful. Two thousand, yeah, basically years a demigod. Like, yeah, I would not allow my worst enemy to be reborn as a no. demigod. That I, they didn't think that through. Yeah, <laughs> I think they had to do like a patchwork of a spell just because they were trying to hurry, and I just think they forgot steps. Well, let's uh, let, let's actually cut that back. I'd say he's a lich. He's not. Oh a, yeah, he's a lich. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's he's not a demigod. He's he's a powerful lich, though. And, you know, there's prop. No, well, technically, he's a mummy. But there's probably some variant of a mummy in some of the D&D books. I, I'll bet one of the D&D monster manuals has that exact kind of mummy and the ritual for it. Because uh, today, they have so many of these monster manuals. That, that's just a desert yeah. lich. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a desert lich. Yeah. Hmm. Imhotep's eyes were crazy in that. <laughs> like, like the very beginning, he's so fucking intense. I'm like, he's looking, and this is in uh, off plex, so it, it was a little blocky and you know a little weird. Mm -hmm. I'm like, he can see what I'm thinking. <laughs> you know? What's funny though is the actual um, person of Imhotep was uh, like a grand architect yeah, during during this person. era. Yeah, not an evil priest, not a sorcerer. So he may have tapped that booty a time or two though. Probably. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Do you want the 30 foot or the 40 foot Sphinx? You know how to get it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do for me? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, this movie is good. I, I've always enjoyed this movie. I, I loved it when it came out in the theaters. I saw it multiple times, saw it with my friends. I think I ran a couple campaigns that were based on something like this. So it is one of my, one of probably in my top like 15 movies. It's just fun and campy. Um, no, it's, it's not in mine, but no. I, I do love it. It does have a, a special yeah, place. I do love it. And you're right. It, Brendan Fraser is, he's, his character in this movie is, is fun and witty and he's got some good one-liners Yeah, and like confident. Like, like, he also, yells at the mummies, the mummies yell back and he goes, nope. <laughs> <laughs> he's also kind of a pig, but, but not but, particularly. Yeah. I mean, he was about to die. Yeah. You know, he was literally about to be hung from the neck till dead. Yeah, Fuck yeah. it, grab the kiss. What are they going to do? Like, take you apart on Facebook? You're good, man. <laughs> <laughs> so this movie actually had its origins in 1992. <laughs> <laughs> this movie had its origins in 1992 when the producers James Jax and Sean Daniel decided to update the original Mummy for the 1990s. So Universal Studios gave them the go-ahead, but only if they kept the budget around $10 million. So even in the 90s, they're like, you're going to do this low budget. There's no way we're going to give you a big budget thing of $70, $80 million. There's no way we're going to do it. Um, in response to that, he, they want, the, the producers decided, well, we'll do a low budget horror setup. And they brought on one of your favorites, Nathaniel, Clive Barker, to actually direct it. Interesting. Yeah, he he set out this huge vision for the film. It was violent. It revolved around the head of a contemporary art museum who turned out to be a cultist trying to reanimate mummies. And I can well, probably left him in there. He yeah. probably would have put in some kind of an Easter egg connecting it to the Hellraiser series. Probably. Uh, but the uh, the produ one of the producers, Jax, had recalled that the tale was too dark. It was too sexual. And it was filled with way too much mysticism. And for, you definitely couldn't make a, a family-friendly Universal Studios ride no, based this, off of that this, movie. This fucker <laughs> uh, ended at PG-13, right? Yeah, it was yeah. PG-13. Yeah, it, it would still be PG-13, too. Yeah. And after that, Joe Dante, who had directed Gremlins, and then um, It's a Good Life segment from the Twilight Zone movie, was the next choice that Hollywood wanted to use, uh, bringing on Daniel Day-Lewis as the brooding mummy. <laughs> I would love to see Daniel, Daniel Day Lewis, Lewis is a method mummy. actor, so like, I understand that he is role. also bury me in a coffin with <laughs> bugs for a week. <laughs> I understand that he is also very particular about the roles that he takes. Yes, I, I don't know from what I've read about him. That and, could have been a very interesting take on it, but I don't. I, I, yeah. I liked everyone where they were, and we'll get to that. There's a lot of people that were actually involved in this movie uh that version was close to being made with some of the elements like the flesh-eating scarabs uh which did make it into the final product uh but the studio wanted to film they bumped it up from 10 million to 15 million at that point and they didn't want to go over that so it did creep <laughs> up a little bit then george a romero was brought in 
to do a version of a zombie style horror there movie, you go. similar to the Night of the Living Dead, but also relied heavily. I was wondering where some of that camp came from, because from what I've heard up to here, that that's not camp. There's no camp there. These are serious people. Yes. Those are serious things. <laughs> and then there's camp. Uh, he also wanted to rely heavily on the elements of tragic romance and ambivalence of identity. So he Which had his they message. Got. I mean, because this yeah, could be called did. The Mummy, A Love Story. It could be. An Ox and a Moon, and Emotep. So his They're draft forbidden love. those booties. <laughs> <laughs> They're so fine. His draft uh, he completed in October of ninety four, and it revolved around the female archaeologist Helen Grover and her discovery Horrible in Abydos. Last name. Hmm? Horrible last I name. I know uh, discovery in Abydos, which if you remember, that's I think that was used in Stargate. I think um, it's also a place. Yes, uh, of the tomb of Emotep, an Egyptian general who lived at the time of Ramses the Second. And it unfolded in a nameless American city in modern times. So, Mummy 2. Yeah, and basically, it, it, Romero also wanted to apparently make it almost slapstick comedy as Emotep as a fish out of water. Ah, knowing fuck, man. It, it has knowing that moments. he's 3,000 years you know, away from where he was, and he has to now blend into this modern-day society. 40 going 16, or whatever the fuck that movie was. <laughs> um, I w- okay, that, that's good. I want to talk about something that I loved. Because yes. this was straight up Matthew. <laughs> There's a little man fleeing you. You're angry at him. What do you do? You can't catch him. You throw, throw a chair, chair at him. <laughs> chair at him. Yes. So good. Is, I howled with laughter. I had completely forgotten that scene. Oh, that, that is a great before scene. I got here. And <laughs> we watched it last hey, Betty. night. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like he didn't we, even we miss a beat. He just picked it up and threw it. He didn't think. He didn't aim. He just took a step, picked it up. And, and he had threw. that look on his face. Yeah. Like, this again? <laughs> yeah. Like, there's, I've done this there, too many times. Brendan Fraser does something really good, and that is be a big guy. Like, people don't often understand, especially those of you who are like, you know, 5'10 and under, mm-hmm. that... Furniture isn't this immobile thing that has to be left over <laughs> or, or hidden behind or moved carefully. It's just a thing. Yeah. You use it as you will. And I, I love that they did that. Just fucking knocked him over. This is my favorite. After Romero had to skip out on it because of contractual agreements with something else, uh, Mick Garris was attached, but he eventually left. And then Wes Craven was offered it, which would have been interesting. No, that would have been awful. Uh, he also, but he turned it down, and then it went to Steve, uh, Stephen Summers in 1997 with his version of The Mummy, which is a kind of Indiana Jones meets Jason and the Argonauts, with the mummy as the creature, giving the hero just a, quote, hard time. Universal liked it, they approved it, and then they raised the budget to $80 million. <laughs> Wow. <there they laughs> off, go, of right. like, off of We're like down. a three-page elevator pitch. Huh. Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Chris O'Donnell, and Mr. All Right, All Right, All Right, Matthew McConaughey were all considered for the part of Rick O'Connell. Nah. So Matthew that, McConaughey that, got Sahara instead. Yeah. <laughs> Sylvester Stallone was offered the part but declined it. Uh, Daniel Day-Lewis was attached, as I had noted earlier. Uh, and Leonardo DiCaprio was rumored to have been offered the role of Rick. Uh, he was... Said to have loved it. He loved the script, but he had to turn it down because he agreed to star in The Beach. Uh, he said if uh, if The Beach could be delayed so he could do The Mummy, he would, but the producers refilled, refused. However, the, the filming of The Beach was delayed anyways. Okay. Yeah. So Hollywood kicks things around and puts other people in. Got it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Knife hook hand guy? Can we talk about knife hook hand guy? <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about knife I hook hand guy. I almost wrote the hook about him. The the adventure hook that we do yeah. later. Mm-hmm. But I didn't write one. But he was the only one who lived. And he has serious wounds. He's and, 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 burnt and, an and like shot. And but he lived. But he's stabbed. like the only one who lived. Like Brendan Fraser takes no fucking prisoners in this movie. Everybody dies. Yeah. It, it's kind of interesting to see that the amount of death that's in this movie that it still got a PG-13 rating. Well, you know, they didn't show the eyes getting sucked out. Oh, you true. know, I mean... And the they, body crimpling down. And, yeah, it, it, well, there wasn't excessive gore. I mean, for us Americans, anyway. I love how they treated Americans in this. It was fantastic. The, yeah, the three Americans. The... And I especially liked when Brendan Fraser was, like, taking it from the brother and sister team, Evie and Jonathan. 
They're like, oh, those damn Americans, no offense, none taken. I can't stand those Americans. No offense. None taken. <laughs> Just that look of like, God damn it. Again, none taken. I really liked the brother. He was fun. Yeah. He, he was oh, really the good. The brother is fun. The, the, the dynamic uh, yeah. between all the major actors was yeah. fantastic. Although it was kind of creepy that he jumped in a sarcophagus with a very, you know, old mummy to what? scare his sister. It was just kind of creepy. Would you yeah. like? <laughs> totally. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Way. Especially because in in this don't touch, stay ten feet behind the glass culture, mm-hmm. it would I'd do it just to do it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they were pretty hands on with just everything. They're yeah. just like, oh, well, this, this is, is a three thousand ancient... year old map, is it? He cracks <laughs> it open on his desk <laughs> and then puts it right next to a flame. Well, that was intentional. Well, I know it I mean, was. I know, but, but I mean, just the shake open on the desk of a three thousand year old piece of paper. Yeah, or papyrus. You know, mm. all of that stuff was remarkably well taken care of when they found it in that in that layer. Like, well, I mean, the props department was just done with it a few months ago. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just like the book was so like the mechanics of the lock and everything. You know, that was straight up D and D kind of stuff. Not, oh yeah, not ancient Egyptian kind of stuff. And because yeah. they would not have, I don't think there would have been any like solid gold book. It would have all been, you know, it was it was it was straight up D and D. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. That's why we watch this guy to schlock. <laughs> <laughs> schlock is a I good term ima- for Can you it. imagine how heavy that book would have been, though? It was solid gold. No, it was just gold. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the scarabs were really cool. I, yeah. I remember seeing that in my teens. been like, that's cool. I'm going to put that in every game I run now. <laughs> Flesh-eating beetles that crawl into your brain. So the Sturges are a good first-level animal. Uh-huh. <laughs> the backstory to that, we kind of cy- circle back around to, you know, having to talk to the, the your, you know, your priests about making sure there's no loophole. So the backstory uh, to the scare beetles in the original script was that... They were put in there so he could have something to eat, not initially that they would eat him initially, so that when he ate them, the scarab beetles, they would then be imbibed by some magical spell, and they would pop out of him, and he would regenerate, and then he would eat them again when he was hungry. I have a, something that pops out of me after I eat something, but it's not a magical <laughs> spell. It's just... Well, maybe some people might say it's a magical spell. <laughs> not anyone has used the bathroom after me. <laughs> you definitely don't eat it and regenerate. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, uh, Bear Grylls. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. That would be... I, that, what a shit job he has, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. God. Literally. So, um, Eve, adorable and yes. good slapstick. Yeah. Like the beginning with the... Uh, with the... Uh, the shelves? Yeah, with the shelves. And, <laughs> yeah, you and knew that was coming, but it was great. Yeah. Um... Like some elements of slapstick were retained, which I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also like that she wasn't just um, she wasn't the girl. That was her I job. Agree. The yeah. girl. She wasn't you know, the damsel in distress. Yeah, I mean, she got in trouble, but she could she could fight her way out of it too. Yeah. She knew how to, and she get wasn't around willing things. to just sit down and be told. She wasn't biddable. Oh, yeah. She was like all up in that dungeon, too. I yeah. remember she that at the end where she, they're all in that big fight and she and her brother are yelling back and mm-hmm. she's thinking on her feet. She's like, oh, no, that's this one. And yeah. she's like, oh, yeah, it's that one. <laughs> uh, one of the interesting backstories script wise of Evie's character, there's a there's a in the original script, there was a, a larger uh, almost little monologue by her. Where she where she t- she tells the audience, hey, my father was the the, the guy that found king king tut that that's that how she kind of fits into the story but it was too long so they cut it down to where her her just saying that yeah. she's a really really famous you know archaeologist yeah. yeah she is the daughter of i forget his name that that actually found you know king tut's tomb screw you benbridge scholars <laughs> <laughs> and she was actually the only person uh only female that was even that even auditioned like uh, the director oh, really? was like i don't want anyone else i think she could do it oh yeah she was perfect for and the role. she nailed it she yeah. knocked it out of the park i like when uh when o'connell was trying to flirt with her after he stole the tools and gave it to her and he was just fumbling and angry <laughs> and, <pissed laughs> off and not good <laughs> yeah. just, like uh his charisma wasn't as high as as one might have thought it was 
It's sitting around a, a 10 or an 11. <laughs> I really like the line when he's telling the story, you know your history. No, I know my treasure. Yeah. I like that part. Yeah. Eve, the map, the map. We forgot the map. Relax. I am the map. And it's just, <laughs> it's I, I all like up this, here. I like this just constantly annoyed. Uh, everyone around me is so dumb thing that Brendan Fraser does. <laughs> he's been doing it since Encino Man. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Which, incidentally, we should do. <laughs> we'll I love it. Encino Man. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have to figure out something to pair that with. Anyway. <laughs> no one uses two-gun mojo, by the way. Everyone was firing two guns at once. Can't do that. Yeah, a lot it of does yeah, not work. I know a lot of people use. Yeah, it was, it was really prevalent. And I... I I think Rick should have been the only one that had like that feat was to was two, yeah, gun, two mojo. gun mojo. Yeah. The other Americans, you know, they, they could have had other things going on, but just him. I love how the Americans were pre- portrayed through this whole thing. <laughs> just and it's so right. I mean, they did a really good job. I think they nailed us. They're just mm-hmm. basically what spoiled boobs. No, yeah. no, they're they're violent, they're friendly, they're yeah. stupid, they're drunk. I mean, oh, they're yeah. American. They, yeah, yeah that's I true. like the like they have big, warm <laughs> hearts, and they'll fucking kill you. The, 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 the one, the one that lost his eyes. I liked yeah. him. I I think he was the the better of that trio. I liked their uh, Indiana Jones guy, the one who got to. Uh, he was protecting her in the hotel room, and then he got turned to. Oh yeah, he's the one that lost his eyes and then lost yeah, yeah. his tongue. No, 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 no. He's the one that was killed in an instant because the window was open. He was the second to last to die. Oh, oh, oh the, okay. the, the actual one, the, the handsome one. The handsome, yeah, the Indiana yeah, okay. Jones type. Yeah, guy. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, the, the hero, the of, hero, their, the, the hero. Of, of their other yeah. party. Yeah, I, I also really liked the all of the interactions with the, the Royal Air Force pilot. I want to talk about Winston for Winston a second. It was great. Winston was a paladin looking for his last battle. I that was agree with that. Fantastic. Yeah. And 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 he he died happy. Yeah, I he mean, did. He literally died with a smile on his face. It's like <laughs> I like that they, I I love that they told him the odds which were which were dire and he just he was so happy. <laughs> He's like, "Yes, all right." <laughs> that whole conversation was great. They didn't need to do much convincing. No, yeah. no. It was the dude's just hanging out in the desert with being fans. <laughs> telling, telling, telling war stories, World War One, yeah. War, World War One war stories. Yeah, it was great. Drunk Eve is adorable. Just adorable. <laughs> She's pissed, drunk out in the desert. Oh, yeah. She's like, I'm gonna kiss you now. <laughs> Bonk. <laughs> Fucking. What was the line she said? It was. It was. Uh, you're probably wondering what a desert like me is doing in, yeah. a, in doing in a girl out here, or something like that. Yeah, it was. She was very cute the so whole time. Hamanoptra, place where they were at mm-hmm. while we were watching it. My partner was counting all the times they said it. Seventeen times they say Hamanoptra. Mm-hmm. That's more than they say any of the characters' actual names. Oh, you don't even know. Uh, I don't know. Jonathan. They say Jonathan a lot. Well, Evie says Jonathan. Well, yeah, yeah, Jonathan. They all do. You don't ever hear the the Majai's name until the second movie, yeah. I think. I liked him, too. A Dead Fair? Yeah. Yeah, initially, the, the uh, costuming for him, he was going to be more covered and have tattoos all over his body. And the director said uh, in an interview that he was too beautiful of a man to cover up his face. Damn right. So he went with no ta- just the tattoos hot. under his eyes. He's the He's one who grabbed guy. Yeah, he is. He's what? what? He's the one who grabbed Frazier. Did you hear that comment? <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God, no. He's too beautiful of a man to uh, cover up his face. That's what the director said. <laughs> right, and I'm tying it into the Brendan Frazier oh, thing okay. from earlier that he uh, didn't get any work because oh. somebody groped his junk. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Gotcha. Oh. Pay attention. <laughs> oh, oh, for Brendan. So who's the director? Now we know whose fault it is. Uh, the director is Stephen Summers. Stephen Summers, what have you done? Uh, he was also known for the entire Mummy series. Uh, G.I. Joe, The Rise of Cobra. <laughs> See, that was Summers, a... what have you done? <laughs> that Van was Hel- a wait. fun movie. <laughs> Van Helsing. Stephen Summers, what have and you done? And actually out of this list, uh, he has a, a quite an extensive list, but I went with the things that most people might be more aware of. Uh, one of my favorites with Leonardo DiCaprio, Catch Me If You Can. I don't know if you guys ever never saw, saw it. it. Never yeah. saw it. Okay. Uh, screenwriter was also Stephen Summers. The cinematography was by Adrian Biddle. And he has a rather extensive 
resume. Uh, some of the ones we, we've we've done. One of them, he did cinematography for Aliens, The Princess Bride, Willow, Judge Dread, Hello. Event Horizon, and V for Vendetta. Okay, so we've done two. Yeah, two. Uh, Mr. Jerry Goldsmith, one of my favorites, did the score. Uh, if you're not familiar with his work, you can listen to Chinatown. Go watch a movie. Yeah. yeah like almost any movie. <laughs> First Blood, Explorers, Total Recall, Treasure Planet, yeah, Legend, yeah. to name a few. Look what I got. And he holds up the cat and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was great. Okay, so one of my things with that, with that whole part, why wouldn't you fucking keep a cat with you at all times from that they point quickly on? Said, Have you ever yeah. tried to keep a cat against its will? Yeah, for an you put extended it in a case. period of time. You put it in a box. Well, then the cat's what? not scary. Yeah, and then is the cat alive or dead? I don't know. <laughs> but I see what you did there. <laughs> so they, they, did, they did have a line about that. Well, no that. one said he didn't. It's okay. They did have a line about that, that he was only afraid of cats until he had fully regenerated it. That's ah, when he didn't care. Okay. So that would have been a great line, but we would have lost the PG-13. It's like right. after he fully regenerated, he holds up the cat and he does that mouth thing. And yeah. <laughs> it, it was one of those lines, like the first time the cat did the thing, they turned to the, the scholar. And they're like, yeah, so what's that about cat? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. And he goes, oh, yeah. yeah. The, that scene where his mouth would like when he unhinged his jaw and his mouth got bigger and everything. And then the when he's in, also put in by the director. I see what you did there. <laughs> I'm convinced it's Stephen Summers. <laughs> you broke Brendan Fraser, you son of a bitch. <laughs> well, he oh. was kind of ripped and at, like abtastic at that point. Still, he was just after George of the Jungle. Yep. Anyway, you were saying <laughs> <laughs> because the CG for this movie was still in its Sorry. infancy with like better it held CG. Up okay. eh. I watched it on Plex, man. I mean, it was it was, it was hard yeah. to sell. Yeah. Um. That the the scene where he regenerates with the with the scarab beetle that comes out of his face, that took the CG guys like three and a half months to do. Whereas today that would pretty much be done in like a session. Uh because they had to rotoscope, they had to do everything, they had to put the, the first generation like the suits on and set everything up. A lot of the budget, twenty five million dollars of the whole a whole budget went to CG graphics. Yeah. Okay. They used to be really expensive. Yeah, now it's it. cheaper to be actually on location again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, O'Connor, looks like we got all the horses. <laughs> hey, Benny, looks like you're on the wrong, wrong side, side of, of the, the river. river. <laughs> I, mean, I just love this movie. I love everyone's interactions. I mean, everyone thinks something about another character. They're not just giving their lines. There, there's, There's all kinds of stuff. Like she treats him like a brother. He treats her like a sister in, in every, in every part of it. And just everyone's connections in this was incredibly genuine, which is something that's actually really hard to do way harder than beetles under the skin. But that was really cool to look at the beetles under the skin again. Yeah. But American. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did. The beetles were cool. And you know, uh, I was about to make a joke about the Beatles. I was just going to say, but that, the, uh, I'm with you. The, yeah. the interactions between the cast were, were so. How did that's Tom why Cruise I do? like that. I'm, movie. I'm sure that budget was huge. Oh, the the the, the Tom Cruise mummy budget. Yeah, I'm I sure didn't... it was a huge budget. But if you don't have that genuineness, it's not funny and it doesn't fucking I, matter. I agree. So I if agree. I remember correctly, there were three mummy movies, right? And then yeah. the Scorpion King. No, yeah, I think, well, wasn't Scorpion King Scorpion? Three, well, you, you, it goes Mummy, Mummy Returns, and then Scorpion King, yeah. which was its own separate franchise. And then there was there's, another because there's Scorpion four, King. there's four Scorpion King there's movies. Four. Yeah, uh, and then we did. This then is there, a cinematic universe. And then there was the uh, Mummy uh, Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. Did, which, that was the one that did not get Rachel Weisz back, right? No, no, they got someone that yeah. as 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 they're introducing her because she's yeah. reading the book from their adventures because she's become a very big author at this point yeah. and just reading about their adventures and how they've become wealthy beyond anybody else on the basically the fucking planet um uh is she sounds just like rachel vise and the camera slowly pulls up and you see it's not rachel vise she didn't want anything to do with the with the franchise anymore she's like i did too i'm done no more Ugh, she was so good i love benny how unapologetically shitty he was yeah. like yeah. He, he was he was the quintessential rogue Especially the scene where he's holding up all the all of his necklaces to yeah, see which one yeah. can get him out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was good. That was yeah. a D and D move. This yeah. movie was made by D and D gamers. Yeah. Like 
everything that happened in this movie was like a campy dungeon crawl. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. going to get yours, Benny. You're going to get yours. Oh, yeah. Like, I've never heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> but this was such a better D&D movie than D&D. &D. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This this movie was really good. The second, the, the Mummy Returns, I'm not a big fan of that. The third one, I actually, aside from a couple of very overly campy things, I really like the, 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 the Tomb of the Dragon King installment much more than even because it came out just a little after Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls came out. I thought it was a better Indiana Jones movie than the Indiana Jones movie. I thought this was a better Indiana Jones movie than the Indiana Jones movie. Mm, yeah, I can hear that too. <laughs> There is one exception, though. I, I think uh, The Last Crusade it's is a great an amazing, amazing movie. movie. Oh, yes. And th that's another one where it has really good interactions between it's, the it's, characters. It's always about that. Yeah. yeah. Between yeah. Indy, Sean, Indy Connery and and Sean Connery are mm. playing father and son. The yeah. dog? <laughs> you want to name after the dog? <laughs> so good. <laughs> so, well, of course I mailed it to you. I, why would I mail it? Why would I keep it? <laughs> um, um, yeah. All right, so uh, the budget on this movie, we heard, was eighty million. Yes, opening weekend it made forty three and a half million dollars back. Uh, gross USA it made one hundred and fifty five million dollars, and worldwide it made four hundred and fifteen million dollars. Well, it clearly made enough movie, money for them to make sequels <laughs> and, and the Scorpion the, King. Uh, the weekend after the, the honestly, I liked the Scorpion King. Yeah, I, I do. It, Except for the right? ending with the CG rock. That was kind oh, of yeah, horrible. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. You mean the ending of the second movie with the CG Scorpion King? Oh, no. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he was, that was in the, awful. Yeah, that was the Mummy Returns, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, but, but the Scorpion King itself was a good yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would yeah. mix the two up. I think me. that was the one that put the rock on as, oh my God, this guy can almost act. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then he got an actual acting one. And yeah. we're like, oh, shit, the guy can act. Uh huh. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Who knew? Uh, apparently, the director made comment in an interview that the we after the weekend uh, um, numbers were done, the studio called and said, "We don't care what you have to do; get another one in production as soon as possible." Right on, go, Brendan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I miss you, Brendan. We yeah, really so do. do Come back. Yeah. Uh, filming for this movie was only seventeen weeks. I believe it. Yep. Yeah. Started May 4th, 1998, and was 17 weeks. Uh, went from uh, Marrakech to the Sahara Desert, a uh, small town of Urfood, if I pronounce that properly. Marrakech and Urfu. Okay, thank Marrakech you. Marrakech is a really delicious restaurant yes, here it in is. Portland, Oregon, in the Northwest. It's amazing. I've had multiple birthday parties there. They got belly dancers. You sit on the floor, you eat with your hands. It's amazing. Multi-course meals. I don't, I don't like meals. belly dancers. They just remind me of my mom. Oh, well, <laughs> that would be weird. And it I is, can understand why be, you yeah. wouldn't like that. Yeah. I, I just can't get into it. Yeah. Brendan Fraser actually almost died during this, the filming of this movie. When? Uh, when they put the, the, the noose on him. He, oh, uh, yeah, he, him. Yeah. Yeah. Go they, figure. They, yeah. He, he actually stopped breathing and had to be resuscitated there on set. Um, uh, and then also take that indeed with your <laughs> dysentery. <laughs> and then also the director didn't let anyone know until after the filming had wrapped that the studios had to take out a massive, uh, kidnapping insurance against everybody because there was a lot Where of political dissent. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of political dissent going on at the time. And there were already threats of people getting kidnapped while on set. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the third world, baby. <laughs> <laughs> There was also a, a dormant volcano that was found, uh, how did you pronounce it, Urfu, Urfu, uh, where the entire set for Hamanoptera could have been constructed. And Sumner's director liked it so much because unless you know, knew that there was something inside that old volcano, then you would, millennia could go by. No one would know that there was a city in there. And I thought that, that, that was brilliant storytelling, I th thought. Hmm. I, I like the heat wave thing wave oh yeah uh, how, how they just hit it yeah. like you you get it at mm. a certain time at a certain uh -huh. angle and that's it yeah it was pretty cool I, the whole collapsing into the sand thing is that, a little yeah. tired yeah like that i was like that's and cheesy. seeing all the gold bars fly up yeah. into the air oh and yeah. the fact that he could just do it at any time benny 
then he collapses it just by leaning against the thing, you know, a random lever in a hallway yeah. somewhere. Yeah, it wasn't it's like, near the entrance. <laughs> it's near the entrance. Yeah, that's like, that's a that was a little ham fisted. Also, how the fuck did they get out of the city? The city when they're oh, being yeah, chased yeah, by because they're they're out the door and then all of a sudden they're about three quarters of a mile away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, they're they they jump into the sewer. That dude sacrifices himself to let them escape, and then they're out. Oh, the, the, the dude oh, who survived the dynamite. <laughs> uh, also, carry dynamite. No, oh, yeah. The, no, always have dynamite with you. They're out of the city, and they're driving the same car that they wrecked. <laughs> how are... How, wait, what? These are things. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're movie things. You just <laughs> yeah. hand wave them. Oh, yeah, and they threw dynamite. He threw dynamite at that guy. How did like, that guy live? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I did like shield. that. Apparently, you know, I, I did like the, the striking of the match on, that was on nice. the Majai's face. Yeah, yeah. And then he did it, it to in. himself moments later too. He struck another one. I was mm-hmm. like, "That's pretty, pretty clever." Yeah, I think I remember when I first started to get that was a thing when when we first to do started that. like Couldn't like early teens. You try your first cigarette. You're trying to be cool. Yeah, all you have is kitchen matches because there's not a lighter in the house. Yep, yeah. and you just sort of gouge it into your face. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what? I never, I never tried that. Yeah. I'm sorry. Life is for a living. Um, <laughs> God, you're an asshole sometimes. Life is for a living, <laughs> goddammit. So many of the things in this movie were inspiring to my brain. It's like, okay, The Mummy, I was well into gaming by the time this movie came out. But The uh, Mummy was too, yeah. super inspirational for the games that are in afterward. Almost, but not quite as inspirational as Raiders, not Raiders of the Lost Ark, um, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom specifically the minecart chase. Yeah. I try to put a minecart chase at almost every dungeon that I run now because I love that scene so much. It's I, I've had minecart dreams of riding on a roller coaster like that mm-hmm. in a dungeon being shot at and stabbed at. It's just cool. The mummy Donkey Kong mummy Country does it well too. Yeah, mm. it does. Yeah, it does. So. Yeah. The mummy came really close. Were there any tie-in video games? There had to have been. Yes, there yeah. were. There were two video games uh, for consoles that were that were made. There was a PC game that was made. There was also like a Game Boy Advance puzzle game that was based off of the movie, but you just it was just little uh-huh. simple puzzles. Huh. And there was like a Universal Studios ride. Tie-in games yeah, are almost the always mummy. universally awful. Yeah, there's a few exceptions, but I can't imagine a mummy game actually being good. The literal worst we actually just spoke of the movie earlier is uh, G.I. Joe, Rise of Cobra. There was a Rise of Cobra video game? It is an Xbox 360 game. Yeah, It is near the end of Xbox 360 where they could take full advantage of anything that beautiful strong console had to offer. Yeah, And they gave us a 1942 style top-down shooter. And it was awful oh, just, see i love 1942 worst, as yeah, a video it is game the worst game oh that's I've too bad ever played i played the hell out of 1942 in the arcade at the godfather's pizza near yep. my house and home my hometown i, I did it i the live pizza next place. to a godfather's right now and they don't have anything there that's yeah godfather's is just oh. nowhere near as or in, taco pizza yeah they don't have the taco pizza? No. Why the hell would you go to Godfather? That was it. I mean, <laughs> wow. Either that, you go for the buffet. We used to, when we were broke, we would all go down to the buffet mm. and have backpacks full of uh, resealable containers, and we would just siphon <laughs> pizza into our bags. <laughs> Get like four pieces, but for every like we four pieces. We would leave with like 10 pizzas worth of pizza in our Kids these days are really hungry, aren't they? Hey, we were broken. We were stoners. <laughs> oh, we would we would game at a, like hometown buffet over by the the, the mall in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. As we you'd pay the lunch price. We'd get there just before lunch was ending, like at four o'clock. Pay the lunch price of like six ninety five for a person, and then we'd sit there until <laughs> closing time. Like a stack, like all of us would have like a stack of like eight or uh-huh. ten plates of like you know. Just now food. I want buffet. <laughs> <laughs> I want that yeah. garbage like food. Oh, that overly processed mashed potatoes. Yeah, and, <laughs> and then like that really shitty salad that you kid yourself into thinking that's going to take care of what you just ate. Yeah, <laughs> it's like that Mitch Hedberg joke. If you could eat an onion ring and a banana, when they get down to your stomach, the banana says, "It's cool. He's with me." <laughs> <laughs> I love Mitch Hedberg. Yeah, I loved past tense. I guess yeah. loved. What else we got? I liked Benny. Benny was, <laughs> Benny was great. As I, I, I would have. I mean, that was that was the laurel to his hearty. That was fantastic. 
Um, it was, just, just, yeah. just their byplay. Uh, this, this history of him constantly abandoning, betraying, and leaving him in the lurch. Well, that character doesn't mysteriously, magically come back in the second movie, does he? I don't, uh, if I don't I remember so. correctly, I th- think he's no. There's he's no. Dead. Okay. Yeah. There's yeah. no reference of him. No, in the like second movie one. magic can do yeah. weird things. Just curious. I did. I did like that part of of uh, you know O'Connell holding him on the boat. Saying, what do you do? Take him out, take him out to the site and then leave him in the desert. And he's mm-hmm. like, no, these Americans are smarter. I, they, they, have, they pay me half now and then yeah. half when they get back. <laughs> Clever, Benny. <laughs> Goodbye, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Benny. <laughs> I also like the warden. Um, Apparently, he's like, he's too like, good at time. No, 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 no. He's like, uh, what do we do? What do we do? Wait here. I'm going to go get help. Okay. And he's bouncing around and he... <laughs> like you see the realization of oh right uh-huh. yeah <laughs> i thought i always thought it was interesting that um uh, was it uh evie's brother because he he got the he got an, a scare bug in his arm yeah and then brendan fraser just he just yeah took his butterfly it. knife out and put, i'm like god you would like the hole that you would have in your arm and everything that was like destroyed that arm is done cut Not that off skin stretches it, well, it, it's just it wasn't his arm at that point it, it already it had made it up to his shoulder and was about to go up his neck oh, okay yeah yeah that's right but still he would have a hole it's, it's a just lot of skin, damage hmm? it's just skin uh but oh and this but, is also the 1930s you're like I just, you know, we all came through the the, the Great War together. This is this is nothing. You know, when stoicism was still a thing. <laughs> he also solved so many problems by shooting them. Oh yeah, yes. the beetle, one bug. He <laughs> shot the beetle, and then moments later, it's dark in here. I'm gonna shoot that mirror. Boom! <laughs> like, like, like the well, magic of 1930s guns. He, yes. he he is an American. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's how we turn on. If any of you are overseas, I'd like you to know that that is a perfectly accurate depiction of how i turn on my lights it's how i make my morning coffee and how i do <laughs> it's everything. not going to be a good idea for you to live in this in this boat that you bought then if you turn everything on with a bullet oh it's easy you just get a smaller gun i have a bb <laughs> gun there's a show it's a web series called humans and household it's done by the same people who make the gamers series mm-hmm. And the premise of the show is they are, it's filmed, the story is being told as if a bunch of people from this fantasy world are sitting down to play a and d like game based in modern day Earth. Okay. Where one of them is like a, a hockey player, one of them is a nurse or a doctor, one of them is a, a political activist hippie, and the other one's a hacker. And it's the most mundane adventure. You have to cross the street. You have to go to your friend's house. <laughs> your friend has left you a message. I don't want to give away some of the things, but one of the jokes is that, uh, you know, they each have character sheets and part of their character sheet was picking their race. And if three of the four picked American and at one point they're in combat, they're like, oh, no, we don't have any weapons. And the GM's like, didn't you remember the racial bonus you picked? They're like. Oh yeah, American, and then they all pull out <laughs> two guns and just start shooting. <laughs> it's funny because it's that's, true. Yeah, like, hey, it didn't is you, true. Didn't you take race? She's like, no, I picked Canadian. Why would you do that? Oh, you know, free health care, <laughs> nice people, better par. <laughs> <Just goes. laughs> but yeah, it was great. <clears throat> that's all I, I have to say. Um, all I can say is, if you're one of our younger listeners. I highly recommend this. This is older. It's probably around about the time, uh, you know, it's almost 20 years old now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it's totally. it's really worth your while to watch. It is a funny movie. It holds up. It does. Some of the graphics may not, but especially if it, they're really that, that, good. That doesn't matter. If but you're, the if story you're interested holds in it up. at all, it is, it is one of the best bantery, witty, one-liner movies of all time. It's, it's better than like some of the things people will say are classics like, uh, like uh, Beverly Hills Cop for Slapstick. I mean, it's just, it's okay. good. It's well-balanced. It's a great movie. If you haven't seen it, you need to see it. It's a good party movie. Yeah. Yeah. There's a party. Mm-hmm. And no, definitely. Definitely really good interactions. A really good team. What else you got for us, Dusty? I don't really have anything else. I think we kind of went through as much as, as I have. I mean, I have some really deep, like, mining down, like, to the mithril level, but... I don't think we should, you know, we don't think we need to go into it. It's just Mithril is found near the surface. <laughs> All right, on that. Hi, everyone. This is your favorite host, Matthew. This week's episode is brought to you by Guardian Games, who we are proud to have as our sponsor. Guardian Games is Portland's largest gaming store. They have almost every game you can think of, be it role-playing, board game, card games, 
miniature games, even video games. They also have a ton of gaming-related material and some pretty neat swag. I mean, the D20 fuzzy dice that go in your mirror, that's good stuff. If, you, uh, <laughs> if you're 21, uh, you can have a drink in the back at the Critical Sip. Booze makes gaming better. Always has, always will. There's free games back there. You'll love it. Uh, they also have a friendly and incredibly knowledgeable staff, and they are the hub of a diverse and friendly gaming community. Um, if you're in Portland, you definitely want to go to Guardian Games. Well, bringing this to the gaming table, Dusty, tell us a little bit about these characters. All you right. Just drink. You did that like twice as slow. <laughs> <laughs> well, bringing this back to the gaming table. I'm going to cut that asshole. <laughs> you did, though. That's exactly how you did it. And you know it. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. Bring this to the faster side of life. I liked it. All right. So we have Brendan Frazier as Richard Rick O'Connell, our stalwart hero. The American, ad, the American adventurer who served in the French Foreign Legion. Oddly enough, he would have never been a lieutenant in the French Foreign Legion because you have to be French to be in to be a lieutenant in the French yeah. Foreign Legion. I actually looked into it once. <laughs> chaotic good. I'm going to go with lawful. I didn't see anything chaotic in his actions. Uh, he was. <laughs> he was. He was in. I'm, Kind of a border, middle borderline jail. That doesn't mean you've done wrong. Yeah, <laughs> but he, so you know. his actions, his activities, grabbing her and kissing her against her will through the bars. Eh, I uh, would say he was definitely chaotic. You guys are always jerk off over chaotic good over here. And now you will call the, the, the clearly chaotic <laughs> no, I, good hero. I think, chaotic I think if there good. was like, like if, if there's, he, uh, he yeah, bounces very, between let, the Let's two. talk about Benny. Because even though Benny had betrayed him, he was still trying to help because he was a fellow human being being abandoned. I Benny didn't see that still as... had an honorable side to him, even Benny though he didn't. didn't but Benny did it. To himself. Oh. <laughs> That's not an honorable side. <laughs> that, now you're just arguing. Anyway, um, uh, yes. <laughs> I didn't, I would chaotic good. That's, that's what I've been going with. I, I, I'd go yeah. lawful myself. I, mm, there's, he bounces between both of them, like through the whole movie. I don't think he stays as one the entire time. Yeah. I, I can't. I think he bounces. Beyond, so I'm going to say beyond bounce. kissing a pretty woman before he was about to be executed. I don't think I saw a chaotic action from him. I think most of what he did, he okay, he wasn't like Looney Tunes chaotic, but he he never he didn't give a shit about the laws of this place. He I don't know. He was How? very what? How? Tomb raiding, dude. <laughs> <laughs> like he he was fulfilling his contract. He was committing a lawful act. I don't uh, know what you're g going with here. You're insane. I, just, I can't. I can't. The whole she time I'm watching him. this, the whole time I've been wa I was watching this movie, it's just like kind of good. Kind of good. No, he because is, in my brain, kind of good works outside cable, the, the 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 confines of the law when necessary, right? Now, I would for some reason he's a Robin consider, Hood type character, right? Yeah, yeah okay. I would consider Indiana Jones to be lawful good because he yes, was always agreed. like, this belongs agree in a also. museum. Yes. And mm -hmm. he was definitely dedicated to that. Brendan definitely just seemed like, I don't give a shit, pay me. No, it wasn't pay. He was he was owed for her freeing him. Uh -huh. It was it wasn't he wasn't a mercenary. That was a debt of honor, which he fulfilled in a lawful way. I still think he ba he bounced his, he bounced between the two. Yeah, I think you two movie. need to figure out what words mean. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> Rachel Weisz playing Evie Carnahan. I would say that she was awful good. Very, very delicious. <laughs> <laughs> very oh, yeah, awful, awful good. Those very, eyes. very much. Oh, God, I was, was, and, 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 yeah. and this was also before Hollywood said, you know what, sweetie, you need to lose some weight. Yeah. Because she, like, she was. Yeah, she had a little curve on her. She, she was, was yummy. Perfect. Like, just. Yeah. Just Rachel Weisz, as, as was per I think, was perfect for this role. Uh, and she had just this great look about it. that, that look that she like gives O'Connell when she, when she frees him, when she's looking down on the pit and, and like has saved his life that like you're mine. That was a, just a really good look. And she just played she off that, of him she really well. Brendan man meat. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that's why I kissed her. It wasn't chaos at all. <laughs> <laughs> it smelled it on her. And then we have Arnold Vosloo as Emotep. Slash the mummy. Lawful evil. Chaotic good. <laughs> now you're just arguing. <laughs> no, I, I... The mummy? What, what, did he, what did he do that was that was evil? Uh, mummy. A love story. 
Think about that for a second. He murdered a whole lot of people. He yeah. mur- think think of his whole culture. Lot of people. Think of his culture. But at the he same murdered, time, he did he did peasants. murder people that took like his uh, canopic jars, like his thieves. organs. So he canopic. was getting them back. He he murdered thieves. He murdered thieves. That is a good point because <laughs> he murdered, was he murdered people that that like that brought the curse upon them, and that was stated early on. And he didn't write that curse; that was inflicted on so him. He, he is lawful good. No, <laughs> fuck you. I don't know about good. <laughs> what? I don't know about good because he is you bringing play. You are he fucking with me, aren't you? You are just. You're what just did he do? He's lawful evil. What did he do? Did he attack the people who did not open the cursed chest? Oh dear God! Before. Okay. Well, this is Cosmo all over again now, isn't it? <laughs> Nathaniel looks like he's getting backed into a corner over here. <laughs> well, that's because that's what happens when you're wrong. People jump oh. your ass. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to go with lawful evil. Yeah, I, I would agree. actually go with the palladium aberrant alignment. Dude, we're not him. doing palladium alignment. We are no. a palladium printout. And he's, I am he's, doing. He's, 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 uh, he's lawful. I will good say guys. lawful evil. Um, how? He's, I just don't. He's see He's bringing his back the plagues. Good. He wants yeah. to take, like, basically take over the world. He wants to, you know, he wants to kill how, Evie uh, so he can put his long lost love into her soul into Evie. They have been wanting each other for 3,000 years. This bitch Good is like 27. Them. Good for me. I, I, I don't think killing someone to bring back your, killing an unwilling participant is a good act. Well, at least you guys yeah. finally brought up a valid point instead of just going, but he's the bad guy. <laughs> now that's a point. That's, that's valid. This also, true. I will say that he, the thieves, right? Mm-hmm. I think at least two of them were like, here, just take it back. Yeah. There's like, a point where no, like, I'm going to devour it. your soul. <laughs> <laughs> you did take it, so now okay. I got to crime and the punishment. Rules. I'm just saying he was uh-huh. following. As, can we at least agree lawful? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. I, I'm we'll saying totally agree with that. Then we have John <laughs> Hanna as Jonathan, uh, Evie's brother, who I'm brings like John Hammond. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, oh. <laughs> yeah, totally chaotic. Yeah, we can go with chaotic good. Chaotic, chaotic. chaotic good. The yeah, bumbling oh. older brother. Yeah, yeah. It just yeah. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't then, bumbling. He could fight. Yeah, he was. He, could. he, he, double, he was. He had the two gun mojo too. Yeah, he, he took that. Everybody that he was just a bit of a drunk. That character <laughs> creation. Everybody took that feat. Yeah, he was. Everybody. Uh, he was well, the, they, the, they took the American race. <laughs> <laughs> uh, We're gonna and then get we in have so much Kevin J. That. O'Connor as Benny. I uh, love Kevin J. O'Connor. His last right? name is actually Gabor in this movie. So Benny Gabor. But um, I'm going to go with chaotic neutral. Yeah, yeah. Chaotic neutral. He's but not he, necessarily. He's just going evil. for himself. I mean, yeah. he's, he's and extremely, everything was about yeah. himself. Yeah, he's just or a selfish alignment, yeah. if you will. Uh, definitely chaotic neutral. I was not going to put him as evil. He would abandon anybody, but he never actually like. No, when you're like five foot two and ninety pounds, dripping wet, you can't afford to trade punches heroically with the hero. That's no. not how that works. Who towers <laughs> over you? No, yeah. no. He no. basically piled around with a mummy until he saw an opportunity to leave, and then yeah. his own greed got to him. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Kevin J. O'Connor, I want to make a note, is uh, he is one of my favorite little bit actors. Mm -hmm. Uh, Did you ever see a really shitty action horror movie called Deep Rising? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I remember with the cruise ship. Mm -hmm. And he was he was one of the ones on it. And he was great at it. Uh, He he was also in um, Clive Barker's. uh, Oh, it was uh, with Scott Bakula. um, Thanks for killing the franchise, Bakula. Yeah. (laughs) Lord of Illusions. Yeah. yeah, yeah he yeah. was great in Lord of Illusions. Uh, and then we have Oded Fair as Ardeth Bay, who you never even hear his name until like the next movie. It? He's the Magi. Oh, uh, Lawful Good as well. Let's say very, Lawful Good. Very Lawful Good. I would good. also say he's kind of an NPC. He shows up, moves the story along, and then vanishes. Well, so this yeah. this time I actually set up, like I split PCs and NPCs. Yeah, yeah. I kept I kept him in PCs Okay, uh, because he's with the party like the entire I, time. I get what you're saying, but it's in the context of the next movie where he comes along and is part of the party. Yeah. So... So would, you, would he be, would we move him to an NPC? Yeah, he is an NPC, but he is he does have a big enough role that he would have a full okay. Print out. If right. this were an ongoing campaign, like if this movie were You'd played as a game throughout multiple sessions, mm-hmm. his player got sick or didn't show up to a couple of sessions, so they're yeah. like, "Oh, we can't give him a dramatic exit." And, yeah. then, <laughs> and then he showed up at the last session, got the XP, leveled up, and moved <laughs> you on. Know, to the and next that, that would explain the whole dynamite thing. 
Because oh, they're yeah, like, oh, yeah. yeah, he didn't show up for the fir- third fucking time. I just throw the fucking dynamite <laughs> down the fucking tunnel. <laughs> I you, Bobby. Up. Yeah, Fuck there we go. <laughs> and then the, the, the DM's like, ah, oh, Jesus. All right. All right, you're all back on your camels. <laughs> <laughs> Which explains how they got out of the city that fast. <laughs> oh, so kind of to go back, a side note about um, Kevin J. O'Connor. Apparently, every every single camel on set tested him. him would not go near him that's why you always see him like actually fighting with no. a camel <laughs> that's because the camels did not like him no uh all right so going into the npcs we have jonathan hyde as dr alan chamberlain who was the british egyptologist who was like don't open the book do not open the book oh him yeah uh I, I think that's that's honestly all the all the PCs though. Yo, yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, we're going into the NPCs. Are we yeah, gonna do that? We'll, we'll yeah. do some if they're interesting. Yeah, okay. as well. Uh, that guy, the one who. Uh, what about the the curator or the? Oh, oh yeah, who dies? Yeah. Eric Avari. The, that Dr. guy who Terrence was in Bay. fucking yeah. everything. Yeah. When they need a when I need a wise glib tongued older ethnic looking man. Yeah, they yeah. Always had. Yeah, he was in Stargate. Yeah, yeah. He's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then let's see another NPC, Patricia, P- Patricia Velasquez, who played in Ox and a Moon. She was literally she, the very beginning of the, she got yeah. killed in the backstory yeah. and was an animated corpse in the end. So, yeah. The other NPCs <laughs> we have are the three American treasure hunters. Yeah. <laughs> Americans don't get alignments. And then <laughs> one of a like teenager, your alignment is American. Yeah. <laughs> one of your favorites. Steven, uh, I'm sorry, Bernard Fox as Captain Winston Havelock. Oh, he's lawful good paladin. Oh, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, totally. He stayed at his post when everyone else had left. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's a paladin. And, and, and yeah. he, he died in the last honorable, yeah. you know, pursuit of, of glory. No, no, no. You have it wrong. Duty. Duty. He died for duty. He not wanted glory. to die a glorious death, though. Yeah, we all do. Well, um, Speaking of glorious deaths here, Matthew, what do you got for us for a story? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> you know, I, I honestly tried. I really do like this movie, but there's not a lot for me to work on that isn't exactly The Mummy 2 <laughs> because there isn't, there, there's no one left alive. There's no cliffhanger. Everyone is dead. Um, the only person left alive is uh, Stabby McHookhand who got the candle in the eye mm-hmm. and he's just not big enough to be the villain. He's just not. And he was a magi. So he's not the villain. So I, I didn't really have anything to work with. I will say this though, in doing this, it doesn't matter so much what system, what game or what scenario you're playing in, because just like the movie, in order to get the feel of the mummy, you have to have those really witty personal interactions. So your gaming group is going to matter more then what you're playing or what your scenario is with this one. You want to be playing, if you want to play like the mummy, you have to play with people you know and you really I agree. like. I agree. Yeah, Agreed. You yeah. got to have a good party banter and going Like on. you could do this yeah. in, you know, you could do this in classic D&D. You could well, do this in, uh, in space punk. This interaction, what makes the mummy great isn't the setting or the characters. It's their interactions and how they interact with each other. Agreed. And so, I, I completely agree. So if you want to play the mummy, make sure you have good friends. That's that's all I got for this one. It was yeah, that you've known each other for. for quite a while because yeah. that, that bouncing off each other is going to really help. Yeah. Agreed. Now, don't bring in somebody that's like new to gaming or new to your friend circle. Unless he gets the Benny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or the Winston or wants to play the Winston. That's going to be there for like a session. Well, picking up where you just left off, Matthew. If I were going to run this as a campaign, if I were going to pick up where the movie ended, well, just pick the next dungeon. I mean, all right, we have this group together. We look at each other like, you know, we work well as a team. You got mm-hmm. the smarts. You got the charisma. You got the gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's totally a uh, a scholar wizard, yeah. mm-hmm. a rogue, and a fighter. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the party. You got the party yeah. right there. And, you know, the Magi or whatever he was called, he's a... Uh, fucking warrior dervish yeah we'll just keep that guy along too and he's probably going to pop it and then he goes off on a date and he shows up at the end of the adventure again to reap more xp he's kind of the drizzdord 
<laughs> a twin scimitar. I see that. Yeah. That's, that's fair. Yeah. That's I, I, essentially I can what see his that. character yeah. is. Yeah. That being said, though, I really like this the setting point in time. Um, the 1930s. World War One had just ended. We were all going, oh, what the fuck? But World War Two and the associated horrors of it, where we saw what humans are capable of, haven't hasn't happened yet. We're getting into some serious understanding of the world around us. We're starting to master the world around us, not just survive it like we were up until then. Um, it's it's a very interesting time frame to play in because while things are simple, you you still have capabilities that fifty years ago were undreamed of. It's it's a very alive time to put. Uh, it's a very alive setting, is what I'm trying to say. And I don't know if there's a game because I'm I'm not the, the the game person that you are, but I'm I'm sure there's a setting that takes place in there. There's, I mean. Probably 30 of them. <laughs> what does Savage Worlds have yeah. for it? <laughs> Honestly, this is a Savage Worlds game. Yeah. This movie is a straight up Savage Worlds game, complete with the ridiculous twin gun shootery, the weird little tricks that they pull on each other to distract their combatants. Yeah. The, I'm just going to shoot the light to make it work kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. All of this is pokey, pulpy Savage Worlds logic. There's another game I could think of that could pull this off, and that is Spirit of the Century, which is a fate I was book. Thinking about that. I can't really talk about it that much because I don't really like fate, but the book has. A lot has, of people do. As I've been doing this podcast more, fate has a following. Mm-hmm. It has a huge following. Yeah. It's just not my jam. But I will say that Spirit of the Century, the cover of it has a gorilla flying a biplane <laughs> being shot at in a dog <laughs> fight. So it's very, you. that tells you what it's about. Um, what about Hollow Earth? I don't know Hollow Earth. That what well. is Hollow Earth, Dustin? Hollow Earth is a game system that goes along the uh, Jules Verne thought of the you know the the journey to the center of the Earth, and there's a whole other world inside. But I think that the it would work well with this like this scenario. That's interesting because it fits the time frame. Mm-hmm. It, it fits and the exact time frame. Also, it kind of fits of what they do next because you want to go with the classic tropes like this was the mummy. You know, mm-hmm. uh, journey to the center of the earth is is one of those things that they could very easily, you know, maybe they go back to pick up treasure and they find a cave. You know, if you want to yeah. really stick with tropey archetypes, you could run Feng Shui too. It has yeah. the character archetypes right there yeah. for each of these characters. You have the adventurer, you have the scholar, you have the the wisecracking rogue type guy. We don't so. we're not supposed to do this, but I, I honestly, I, I personally. When I was thinking about it after the movie, I thought it was a Savage Worlds game. I did, too, yeah. the whole time. And I know I am biased so we do in that have, I know we it do very have, well. I want to hear more about this from Dusty. Have you ever played this one? Or I actually it? have it. Uh, just I don't know anyone that ever wants to play right. you know, that gaming system. Can you describe it a little more? Uh, yeah. It, like I said, it, it goes along the, the, the Jules Vernian world. of they, the, There is the, the whole world within our, mm-hmm. our world. Is it the dinosaur? Yeah, dinosaurs. That the fantastic, fantastic, like what they do next too. Yeah, fantastic, like electromagnetic weapons and like Tesla mm -hmm. weapons and all these weird things. Nineteen thirties, yeah, everything that was like the nineteen thirties, and even to include you know like Nazis and everything else that goes along along with like Indiana Jones. So take Indiana Jones, the 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 spirit of the century that you were talking that you had just mentioned, and Jules Verne, and throw it into a blender, and that's the game. That could really work. That could. I, I don't know enough about the game to for us to really. Should jam we pass on this system. one off to Dusty though? <gasps> because, do, you because know do you know? Can you tell us about its mechanics? No. See, no, I can't. Yeah, let's. I right, have let's the. Then. We're yeah. no longer like picking a winning game. No, I, I so have. Much. I have we're just the talking books, about games that can be but played. I've never had yeah. anyone that's given a, an interest to like. Hey, let's just to make me want to sit down and yeah. read everything on it to get ready. We'll have to bring it back up because I'm pretty sure that Pulp Adventures definitely going to be coming back yeah into the oh, rotation. it has to d20 I mean, modern has a really good pulp uh section that you can download from their website oh there's also the indiana jones role-playing game yeah which it's, is eh. from what i understand one of the worst yes. games ever made in fact there's an annual award that they give out at the i think it's at gen con called the diana jones award <laughs> 
And the Diana Jones <laughs> is, is literally Jones. a burned. They set the Indiana Jones rules on fire and all that survived was a part of the cover that says Diana Jones. And then they, I think they like bronzed it or put it in there. <laughs> they crystallized it yeah, or something. Put it in lucite. Put it in glass. Yeah. And that's the award. That's fantastic. That <laughs> RPG is the, uh, is the equivalent of the Atari 2600 ET video game. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. I mean, none of them are very good, but that one was bad. <laughs> However, I can't believe I didn't think about this. There's a White Wolf game, Adventure. I think it's called Adventure. Uh, maybe it's Adventure. Is this anyway, pre- there's, there's a trilogy of White Wolf. If there might actually be four games. Somebody who knows White Wolf better should comment on this. However, uh, I think it's called Adventure, and it's set in that period of time. Mm. It is eventually followed storyline by a game called Aberrant, which takes place in near future, which is White Wolf Superheroes game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Aberrant is actually the past setting for their far future game, Trinity, also known as Aeon. And I could be wrong, but for some reason I'm thinking Exalted is set in the far, 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 far past and leads into all the rest of it. I would like to say this. This is the first time I don't have a Palladium game. That'll work. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure there's one. I don't think there is. I just is. can't think of it. <laughs> I, I've seen them all. I've I flipped through all of them. And there's not one for this. Yeah. None, none not not for this mind. setting. So, Kevin, get on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or better yet, come up with a second edition and have it professionally done and make it look better. Just saying. It's cold, man. <laughs> I do love some Palladium games, but come on, Kevin. Get with the times. Do it. Um. Okay, so is. I would say Savage Worlds. Personally, Honestly, if I, were I, I know it, we're supposed to steer clear of that, know, but know. Savage Worlds is trying, perfect for it. But we keep coming back. It's perfect. Yeah. It literally is. We could sit and again make characters for these. They have all it, of the, it also lends yeah. itself to the quickness that this mm-hmm. movie was. I mean Yeah, it's Hollow Earth Expedition. Yeah, that's where they go next. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Show it to No, I have actually have all of the books on uh hmm. digital. Digital, yeah. I think there was All a right. bundle of holding for it. All right, cool. Well, let's uh, let's oh, move into anyway, the... But anyway, the next uh, campaign, real quick, yeah. I'm thinking, yeah, they go to a dinosaur island, mm-hmm. or they just plunder another... They're like, oh, well, let's form an adventuring company. We work well together. Let's go plunder another Egyptian vault, or let's go to Cambodia. Let's go to, at that time, mm-hmm. the Orient, yeah. as they considered it. You know, right, I mean, right. look, look at... Let's, yeah. Look at this cover, straight out of, like, one of the scenes from The Mummies. From the mummy movies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it might be that, but I just, I don't know it. We don't know it. Nobody well knows it. Yeah. So I, 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 also I also have it all on digital, so yeah. I will, I'll bring copies for you guys okay. if you're interested. Yeah. I know you have, we'll have links to uh, places you can check these books out. Let us know Please what you think. The description and below. correct us if we're wrong. I'm pretty sure I got all of that wrong with, with uh, the White Wolf system. Fucking swear it's called adventure, but I don't know. You know, I never went further than, uh, than like vampire and werewolf. A lot of mage. people didn't. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I did Vampire for a number of years. I think from like 97 to whenever they, they kicked the gangrel out of, of it was a time of thin blood and everything. So I think that was like 2003. I tried. That's fairly recent, Dusty. <laughs> and then they killed the whole line yeah. and they started I, I all didn't over. Like, and... I didn't like Mage yeah. really all that much because I think it was just people that I played with. They were just like, I do this. I like Werewolf. Of, Werewolf was all right. Uh, Hunter was a bitch to play, in my opinion. But, you know, well. I was back in Matthew's LARPing days. I'll tell yeah. you about it sometime, but you got to get me drunk first. Yeah, I think we, yeah. we all have those. <laughs> we all have LARPing stories. Yeah. Anyway, Savage Worlds. <laughs> Savage Worlds. I took over a whole strip mall. <laughs> well, we have votes in ah. for our next episode. Oh, shit. Okay, so what do we got? So for the next episode, for 28, uh, the theme is a high school hullabaloo, and we have four movies. So I'm going to start from the rear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> tied for last place are both Superbad and Napoleon Dynamite, each with six percent of the vote. And then at second place with forty one percent of the vote is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Damn it! It's Days and Confused. <laughs> In first spot yep. with forty seven percent is all Dazed right, and Confused. All right, all right. One of honestly, my favorite movies. Honestly, yeah. and I'll, I'll I, I hate saying this because I love Ferris Bueller's Day Off. So do I. But Days and Confused is the better movie. They're they're not wrong. I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, cool. Yeah, thank you, listeners, for voting on that. What's, we appreciate uh, it. Did we put a, another poll up? We What's haven't. Up? I'll announce that later. We, we kind of 
jumped into recording. Yeah. Yeah. So I got the notepad somewhere over there. Stay tuned. You <laughs> Stay will be tuned. Able to control our future. <laughs> Turn for episode yes. 29. Uh, we'll post it shortly. And as always, if you like what you hear, please leave us uh, a couple of words. Let us know what you think. And yes, if you don't like do. what you hear, address it to Nathaniel at Have Movies Will Game Podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we we really like those reviews uh they help us out a lot oh we, yeah do we have any new yeah. ones we don't have any new ones unfortunately oh, we'll get with it people but uh any any feedback that you can have any tips any comments any responses any other movies that you let us see, know that we're not shouting into the void into the void all right everyone thanks for listening we'll catch you in a couple weeks i was matthew and i'm dusty and i'm nathaniel and we'll never speak to you again thanks for listening to another episode of our show we're still pretty new to the scene, and we'd love to get your feedback. If you like what you hear, please leave us a review on iTunes with your thoughts. Good or bad, they really help us get the word out. If you want to say hello, drop us a line on all of the usual social media sites. You can find the links right there in the show notes. You can also leave us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Half Movies Will Game is a Breakfast Puppies podcast production, and our episodes are distributed under CC BYND 4.0 license. Our opening theme is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids, with introductory narration provided by Isaac Scher. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.